Hi, I'm Leanne from Newcastle Libraries. Today I am going to read you the first chapter of Connie Hook's Cookie and the Most Annoying Boy in the World. You can find this book on our BorrowBox ebook service along with loads of other fantastic stories. If you haven't joined up for the Summer Reading Challenge yet, head on over to the website and then you can keep a record of all the stories that you've read over the summer. Chapter 1 Animal Lover If I don't get a pet soon, I'm going to explode. It's taking over my life. I'm an all or nothing kind of person and sometimes when I get an idea in my head, there's just no shifting it and right now I need to have a pet. Plus, everyone else seems to have one. Susie Ashby, the most irritating girl in our class, has five. At least she did on my last count and I don't even have one. I didn't really think I was into animals, but then last month I was walking home from school when a random cat snuzzled me in the street. It came over to me, yes, me, and rubbed up against my legs, then purred loudly before walking off. I was gobsmacked. Animals don't usually like me much, and to be fair, I'm a bit cautious of them myself, especially big birds. Ever since that moment, though, I've wanted a pet, preferably a cat. I've even chosen one in the local pet shop. I've called her Bluey on account of her huge blue eyes. She costs £150, which I know my parents would never splurge out on for a cat, so I've started saving up. So far, I have £7.63. It's a start. Big birds terrify me. I quite like the idea of a cute little budgie or a fluffy yellow canary, but anything bigger? No thanks. I once got chased by a swan when eating a sandwich in our local park, and it has scarred me for life. Quite literally. It pecked my hand leaving a tiny beak-shaped mark on it. I could never be a hand model on a moisturiser advert now. Thanks a bunch, Swan. I had to lob the sandwich, Coronation Chicken, my favourite sandwich filling, into the pond to get it off my case. Afterwards, I had scary swan dreams for weeks where they would just come out of nowhere and chase me. Anyway, back to Bluey. I just think that it would be so nice to have something warm and fluffy to cuddle while watching telly on the sofa. Between you and me, I've actually started pretending my old mohair cardigan is a cat and have been cuddling it in a cat-like manner. I even pretended to feed it once from an old plastic bowl I used as a baby. OK, I am aware how crazy this is all sounding, but it just goes to show how badly I need a pet. Maybe something is lacking in my life and a pet will fill the void. Things that may be lacking in my life. 1. My parents won't let me go on any social media. Susie Ashby has her own Instagram account with nearly 50 followers. You're not even supposed to have Instagram until you're 13, but her mum set it up for her. She constantly posts photos of food she's eating, clothes she covets, and, oh yeah, her gazillion pets. I would be happy with just the one. 2. A younger sibling. I have two older sisters and continually get bossed about. Being the youngest also means getting all their hand-me-downs. No one would be interested if I had an Instagram account full of pictures of me in my third-hand bobbly jogging bottoms. I would dearly love a younger brother or sister to boss about, who would look up to me and wear my old clothes. 3. OK, I can skirt the issue no longer, and so for the last and final void. Kezia, my best friend in the whole world, is leaving. One of her dads has got a job in Solihull and they're moving at the end of term, which is so hideous I cannot even begin to go into it. Void is not the word. Chasm is more accurate. I'm no longer going to have my partner in crime. Me and Kezia are so on the same wavelength. We have the same sense of humour, like the same stuff, and often even think the same things. We are kindred spirits. Plus, she's not allowed a mobile phone either, so we can be oblivious of cool apps and social media together. Kezia is leaving. Swans aside, my worst nightmare has come true. Why Solihull? Why not the other side of town? Why not a few roads away? Why not next door to me? I hadn't even heard of Solihull before this. Kezia reckons it'll be much worse for her and that she'll have to go to a new school where she won't have any friends. I pointed out that I won't have any friends either once she's gone. It's not that I'm unpopular or anything. It's just I've always felt like I don't quite fit in and there's no one else I really want to hang out with. When Kezia joined school at last, all that changed. But now, just two and a bit years later, 
she's leaving. I googled Solihull and it was named best place to live in the UK in a quality of life survey, so not rubbish at all. Great, Kezia is leaving me behind while she goes off to her brilliant new life in the best place to live in the UK. So, I'm going to need to get a pet to fill the Kezia-shaped chasm. Here are my options. Cat, dream pet, I've even chosen one. They are just like cuddly toys that you feed and that sometimes poo on your bed. Though Bluey is far too adorable to soil my duvet, she is just sublime. Love her and her big eyes. Currently too expensive, so that rules that out for now. Dog. Way too much maintenance. I would have to walk it every day. I find it hard enough to exercise myself, never mind a whole other animal. Fish. This is the only thing I reckon my parents might go for, but you can't really cuddle them on the sofa without A. getting soaked, or B. suffocating them to death, or C. both. Hamster slash mouse slash other random rodent. Kezia had mice in her house last year. They nibbled holes in the pocket lining of her favourite coat when she accidentally left a Kit Kat in it, and they did little black poos everywhere. Gross. The council had to get rid of them, and it took weeks. Extremely off-putting. Bird. A small one, obviously. Susie Ashby has a budgie that flies around her house and sometimes sits on a perch in the corner of her bedroom. Apparently it likes listening to classical music. I know all of this from Susie's Instagram, which Nahid found for me. Nahid is my eldest sister, who's currently at uni. She's always on social media. I reckon I may have a realistic shot at a bird. Mum is always commenting on birds. Their singing, how pretty they are, how they eat the rice she puts out for them in the garden. Who knew? Birds like rice. Apparently, Mum used to give them leftover rice all the time when she was growing up in Bangladesh. I'm not sure how cuddly a bird would be on the sofa, but here's hoping. Bird wins. I'll get a bird. A pet will never replace Kezia, but I want one anyway. Maybe it will begin to mend my broken heart. But how do I get my hands on a bird? Hmm...